Mate, I hate Sydney's lockout laws. I, I go to a club, bro, time passes me by, 1.45 hits, I leave, I can't get into another club. I'm just stranded in the city, you know what I mean? Lockout laws, they didn't fix anything. There's more people wandering in the streets that can't get in anywhere. So, who I am? I'm Aaron Roman, also known as Stalker. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been DJing for nearly five years. Uh, always into music as a child. Uh, pretty much the, the DJ thing happened when I was going to house parties and a few of my mates were playing. I just got really curious and jumped on and eventually started going to nightclubs and I was just really curious, like always staring at the DJ, like what they were doing. Uh, I got given my first gig, it was like an opening and it was horrible, I sucked so hard and they never booked me after that first gig. But um, that's pretty much where it all started from. Um, I'm Denzel Sterling. I just started, I joined a group on Facebook, met a couple of people from that. I, yeah, it was just like we were these kids from down south, no one knew us. Um, we just got to throw a party and then after the first party it was really good, um, we got offered a spot here at Kitten Caroodle um, to do a Friday night. Um, and then, so we started doing that and it was kind of like, we, I started to take it a lot more seriously. I was like, cool, this is something that I can put my time and into. Well, I pretty much know that the cross has taken a massive hit and the music industry in general is just suffering from it. What I know about the lockout laws is that it's working. And it's working but not in a positive way. What do I know about lockout laws? Um, <laughs> they're not great. <laughs> they were very they were very just kind of slapped on. Like it was a very yeah, as everyone said, it's a knee jerk reaction and one punch more is that kind of thing. Like it was a it was a big mixture of different things like the the lockout laws came in and then the one punch law came in and as well as the drink regulations. Like it was a big just kind of like Everything was like, okay, we need to fix something, and they just wanted to get it fixed as soon as possible. And it, it worked for the most part, in terms of like, yeah, violence is down in this specific area. <laughs> um, but that's mainly because foot traffic's down. Like, it's not really anything to do with, yeah, it's kind of fixed stuff, it's just kind of moved it. And like, there's been studies, as you can tell, um, that have been posted where it's like, it shows the spread of where foot traffic's going and where the violence is going, and so it's obviously all gone to the casino and all the other new town, all the surrounding areas of King's Cross. On the other side, I guess the politicians were kind of pushed to make these kind of choices because of the media attention that was going around it. It was really unfortunate that people lost their lives over some stupid idiots. Like, as lockouts had already come in, it, it, it hadn't really affected it yet. Like, it hadn't really taken charge of it. Um, it, had, it had been implemented, but nothing really. There was no like after effect of it yet. It was like, oh, like that's a but whatever. Well, it's making people not want to go to the cross. They're making the cross as unappealing to go to, which in turn works because there's less people going there. And um, yeah, it's really unfortunate that, that the music scene, and not even the music scene, it, only the music scene, it's like businesses around the music scene around King's Cross, all, all sorts of jobs. It could be like bar jobs and food stores and takeaway stores and news agencies and taxis and it's all that. Everything's taken a massive hit. Sydney lockout laws fixed nothing. If anything, they just pushed more people who can't get into the city, into, into the suburbs, such as Newtown, other clubs like that, which don't have lockout laws. They get more packed, they get more violent, and, and you're ruining the businesses of people in King's Cross, Darling Harbour, people who are affected by the lockout law. After a gig, I was walking down King's Cross and these two tourists come up to me. And they were German, they're like, where is everyone? What's going on? There's no, there's nothing to do, where do we go? Go to the casino, like, that's the only place you're going to get into. We told him about the lockout laws and he said, like, if this was in Berlin, we would all take the streets and riot. I'm like, fuck man, we should do something like that here. Like, actually make a point of how it's affecting the, the youth culture. And, yeah, we need to stand up for it somehow. Hey, roll, roll. 
adults, we're all like 18 plus, we don't have to be treated like children. I mean, basically the idea that we should be restricted is kind of bullshit. There's a better way to tackle alcohol related violence, that's more or less like if you're convicted like of violence with alcohol, you should be put restrictions on alcohol for you, not for everyone else. Okay, well, what I know is Reclaim the Streets has been running for 13 years now, and uh, it's like kind of by like the old guard. And the, the reason that we're here today is because um, we don't think that it's practical to have lockout laws. We think that there's another agenda behind this government based on the fact that the casino is exempt, um, they're building more roads, and they're not really worrying about public transport. People can gamble whenever they want. They don't. They're not allowed to drink when they want. It just doesn't make sense kind of thing. Like, both the attacks that happened were before 10 p.m. at night. Yeah, it's nonsensical. You shouldn't be able to punish uh, the majority for the actions of a minority. Uh, I think education is key. It just doesn't seem like the right solution for the, the problem at hand. Yeah. I mean, people have been drinking and partying for years, and Europe's a great example of people partying very sensibly. Um, this has never proven to work anywhere in the world, so I don't know why it's, it's going to work here anyway. I think, I think that it's important that there needs to be like a discussion with uh, our generation and what would be an effective way to deal with the situation, but lockout's not the answer. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's, it's quite sad that um, a place that had so much vibrance and culture is just is broken away because yeah, that takes decades to build back up. You know, especially when everyone knows that King's Cross is the, the place to go to. Like, if you come from overseas and you come to Australia, like King's Cross is a big, is a name that they already know about when they get off the plane and they're looking for somewhere to party. Now you've got two clubs in the cross to go to. Thank you.